Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial on shape layers. Now before we get to this add button which I'm going to cover over several tutorials, I just want to show you that there are two other ways of creating shapes in After Effects, both of which are very powerful. So I'm going to minimize this layer and turn off the eyeball so we can't see it. Now all the shape layer tools are basically in this section of your toolbar up here. And we've looked at the shapes that we can create here, but also we can create shapes with a pen tool and we can create shapes with text. And I'm going to start off by showing you shapes with text. Now if you select your text tool and you click in your workspace and you set up the appropriate font you want and style and the appropriate fill and stroke, you can type some text. So I'm going to be very exciting and type text. And then you can go back to your selection tool and shift your text around. Now this is not a shape at the moment. At the moment this is if you like a vector image. You see this little sunshine in your timeline. But this is telling you that it is a vector and that means it's infinitely scalable without losing any quality. And notice also that shapes are vectors. They've got this little sunshine shining as well. This particular button here with the sunshine also has a second function which we'll cover in a later tutorial but at the moment notice that these are telling you that you can scale them to any size you want and you're not going to lose quality. But still we can see from the icon that this is not a shape, this is text. However, we can create shapes from text. Now one of the advantages of doing this, just while we're passing, is that if you have a font on a particular machine and you create something in that font, and you want it then to transfer to another machine, but you don't have the font on the other machine, what you can do is you can create shapes from your text and transfer the project across, and then the shapes are transferred across even if the font's missing and that way you don't have to have the font installed on the other machine. So how do we do that? Well we select the layer and then we go up to the layer menu at the top and towards the bottom you'll see you've got two options with text. One says create shapes from text and the other one create masks from text. Well we're just going to be looking at shapes. So if you click create shapes from text something happens in your timeline. In your composition window nothing looks different however down on your timeline notice that the text layer has actually been turned off and a new layer has been created with the eyeball on which is a shape layer, we can see that from the star, called text one outlines. This is only called text because I typed in text. If I'd called it something else it would have been called something else. Now if you then open up this layer you'll see that you've got the contents and inside the contents we've got the individual letters as shapes each of which can be manipulated. So what we can do for instance is open up the T and you'll see that we've got something that says T, Stroke, Fill and Transform. Firstly we've got transforms just for the letter T. So for instance if I want to skew just the letter T, I can do so just here. And I can do position, rotation all the rest of it. If I open up T itself, you can see that I can change the path. So if I want to adjust how T looks, you'll notice I've got all the appropriate points here. So if I click on Path, I can actually sort of select these individual points and start to actually move how the path itself looks so I can create a completely unique look to my letter. So I can actually adjust and animate the path. So I can change that completely. I'm just going to undo that because it looks hideous. And also I want you to see that as well as being able to change the path of the letter, you can change the stroke. And again, as we showed in the last tutorial, you can go for dashes and you can create dashes if I just turn off the path here. This, this particular button toggles the visibility of the mask and you can see that we've got dashes. We can change the stroke width, we can change the color. We can do all the normal things that we can do with any shape. All of it is available for each individual letter. So at the moment I'm just going to skew this one slightly and then I'm going to close it so we can see all of the letters together. Now I can do that for individual letters but also a very helpful function that doesn't mean that you don't have access to these features but means that you can also change the whole thing in one is to actually use this add button here but before we do that let's click right at the top so the actual layer is selected and we're not still selecting something inside one of these letters 
So select the top layer and click Add. And right at the top, you've got one that says Group. And what we want to do is group all these letters together so we can affect them all together. So click on Group, and a new group is selected. And then what you can do is select the top of text and hold the Shift key and select the bottom. All of them are selected, and then just grab and drop them into Group 1. Now, if you want to rename Group 1, it's as simple as this. Select it, hit return, and rename it anything you want. So I'm going to call it Text Shapes. And then hit return again, and we've renamed it. But when you open it up, notice that I have access to all of the individual letters. So I can still go in and I can change T and do all the bits and pieces we could do before, as well as change the transforms for T. But notice also now I have a new transforms for the group. If you open up the transforms for the group, I can now skew all of the text together while still having access to the individual letters to change them as we go through this. So that's how you can take text. You can change it into shapes, which can then be moved to other machines without the risk of moving a font across and all the licensing problems that go with that. And how you can group all your letters together, and then you can access individual letters. You can even change the look of individual shapes, so your letters can be changed, and that you can group them, and having grouped them, that you can then do transforms that affect the whole of the group in one go. So that's how you can use text to create shapes. The other thing I want to show you, and I'm just going to turn this layer off, is how we can use the pen tool. So if you select the pen tool, as soon as you do, with nothing selected down here, note, nothing is selected, we've got the same fill and stroke that we previously used, and I can now use the pen tool to create a shape. Now there are two particular ways of using the pen tool. One is to simply click, and the other one is to click and drag. Now notice, I do not have Roto Bezier clicked up here. That is unchecked, and when it is unchecked, and I was to do four points, so I'll do one over here, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go back to the original. That's one shape selected. That's done without Roto Bezier. Now I'm going to click Roto Bezier, and I'm going to click the same again, one, two, three, four, finish. Now that's the difference between not having Roto Bezier ticked which is going to give me square points, and having Roto Bezier ticked, which basically tries to round off everything. Now, once you get used to the pen tool, it's better not to have Roto Bezier checked. So if I uncheck that, I'll show you how you can actually create these rounded corners. Click and drag, pull out. Now I'm going to do one right at the bottom, opposite that one, and I'm going to click and drag and pull out the other way. And then I'm going to click and drag at the top again, and I've created, well, a circle of types. And it's all of these are using the same fill and stroke that I had before. And if I open up my layer and open up my contents, you'll see that I've got three shape layers, all of which can be changed separately. Now, of course, I can open up the path, and if I want to, I'm on shape layer three here, I can actually modify the path. So click the stopwatch next to path. I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to go back to my arrow tool here, my selection tool, and to get hold of this point, I'm actually going to marquee drag around the point I want to alter. So I click outside and drag over the point I want to change. That gives me back my Bezier handles, and I can start moving things around, and I can just change how these two are going to look, so I get a completely different look. And now when I move between the two, you'll see that I've created animation. So that's how you can change them, and to get hold of these points, as I said, if we go to, say, shape 1, and we open up the path, and we click on the stopwatch, I need to draw a little marquee surrounding one of the points, and then I can se select the point and move it. Now, this obviously doesn't have handles, and if we go to shape 2, and do the same thing, open up the path and go to path, and select one of these. Again, I don't have handles, so neither of these are coming with the handles. This is why I much prefer to actually not have Roto Bezier selected and do the click and drag method because if we go back to shape 3, select the path and then do the marquee selection around the points again I've got these wonderful handles now if I want to break these handles I can click and start moving one and while I'm moving it, if I then hit the alt key or the option key I can now start to move things around and now once they're broken I can move them independently. If I go to the bottom one again, they're linked. 
and if I hold the alt key while I'm moving it and change it and now I can move it as I like and I can create some weird and wacky shapes and then of course you can build up your characters with this you can go in there and you can do all the things that we've done before you can change the stroke you can change the fill you can add dashes around the outside and of course you can transform individual items without having to worry about all the others so there's an awful lot you can do just by using the pen tool and the pen tool is a fantastic way of creating characters you can create heads and you can create bodies and of course you can animate them over time by changing the path so that's how you can use the text tool and the pen tool to create different types of shapes which can then be animated with this wonderful add button which I will show you more of in the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Thank you.